So t today it looks like this. So I'm going to draw one big right triangle. Have I lost anybody yet? This is a right triangle. Then I'm going to draw an altitude inside of that right triangle. It looks like this. Which now creates three, triangles. three right. similar right triangles. So you know one piece of information that you know is that all three triangles are similar. That means all their corresponding sides are proportional. Make sense? Yes. So in one scenario on your test, it's going to ask you, what is the correct proportion? You don't have to do any math. Just make sure that it's the right number over the right number, not the right number over the wrong number. So we'll walk through this baby steps. Okay, here's your first example. You'll notice that there's a big chart here. All right? The big chart says I have a small triangle. I have a medium triangle, and I have a large triangle. I'm going to show you the chart right now. If you like it, you can use it. I'm going to show you my way at the same time. If you like my way, you can use my way. But I'm just going to continue teaching my way because I think it's better. So the first step is to look at the huge diagram of triangles and see if we can identify what the small triangle looks like and what it's labeled. So where it says small triangle, uh-oh, where it says small triangle, I'm going to list, or I'm going to draw a triangle like this, okay? Now look over there at the picture. Where is the small triangle? Is it on the left? Is it on the right? Or is it the big one? This is the small triangle. Okay? So when you look at that small triangle, where's the right angle? Right there. Okay? So I have a, I have, I'm going to put my right angle right here. Because I drew the first triangle like this, I'm going to draw every other triangle like this. All right? So look at the red triangle over there. What is this side called of the small triangle on the top? What do you call this side right here? I. Does that confuse anybody? Okay. What do I call this side? And what's the hypotenuse or the one opposite of the right angle? F. F. All right. So here's what I have. I have a small triangle. <clears throat> the small side is I. The medium side is J. And the long side is always the hypotenuse, F. So I just took one triangle. I labeled it. And I put those labels in the chart. Feel good about that? I feel okay? So I'm going to pick a different color. I have this triangle right here. This is known as the medium triangle. And here's the right angle. So I know the medium triangle looks like that, right? It's flopped over, but I'm still going to draw the medium triangle the same way I drew the small triangle. I want them all to be the same, okay? And I'll, and I'll show you why here in a minute. So what is the small side of the blue triangle? J. J. Agree or disagree? J is the small side. Which one's the medium side? H is the medium side. Which one's the long side? G. So short is J. The medium is H. Hypotenuse or long side is G. 
Now I'm going to look at the big triangle. That's this one right here. Uh, I'm going to do that in black. Still going to draw the same triangle with the right angle in the same place. All right? What is the short side of the yellow triangle? F is the short side. What's the medium side? Okay. Uh oh. Look at the big yellow triangle. So here's something we can talk about right now. You see the right angle right here? You see the right angle? That points to the longest side. So K is the long side. It's across from here. So if I have an F, a K, and a G, which one's the middle one? G. G. So F is the small side. G is the medium side. And K is the long side. How do we feel right now? So this is something you're going to have to do, either with the chart or draw them by yourselves. Because here's the questions. What's the missing part of the proportion? F. F. J. F? You think it's F? So if we're looking at it, we can look at just this part right here first. It says F over K. Well, which triangle does not have an F? You see that? Like eliminating, which one does not have an F? This one doesn't. There's no F in this column. So they say F over K should be equal to I over F. Because they did F over K should be equal to I over F. So here's what it looks like on down here. They did hypotenuse F over K. And then they said I, which is the short piece, over F, which is the short piece. So those are those two corresponding parts of similar triangles. Now, could you have seen that just by looking at the yellow triangle over here? Probably not. Could you imagine trying to figure out that puzzle from the yellow triangle where everything's all mixed up? False. No, I don't think so. So let's try the next one. The next one looks like this. I over J is equal to J over something. Well, which triangle does not have an I? Which triangle is missing an I? This one does not have an I. So they did I over, uh-oh. Is that am I, am I doing it right? Or which triangle doesn't have a J? I'm not, I'm not. I'm just trying to help me learn the process. So I have an I and a J, and then I have a J and a blank. Well, which question? Which triangle is missing a J? This one doesn't have a J. They did. I over J, and then J over H. So they did I over J, which is short over short, and then they chose J, and the corresponding length for J would be H. It's a matching game. Like, what, what will work and what will not work? They don't tell you which two triangles are related because you have three of them. All right, let's try our last one, which is um, something over F and F over something. Uh-oh. Well, 
They are using what letter? They, F. F. They are using F. And there is definitely one that does not have an F in it. So they said something over F and F over something. So I'm using the small sides and the large sides. So I can do I over F. That's I over F. And then I have something F. And what corresponds to the F? K. So I did I over F and F over K. Oh, this is so great. This is the whole concept. So here's why it sucks. It's because they're creating proportions for you. Now, when you get to create your own proportions, you get to choose which ones you want as long as you stay consistent. You do like small over medium, small over medium. Or medium over large, you can do medium over large. So there's something really cool that's up there that happens. Can you ever see it? Do you see the cool part? Okay, let me show you the cool part. Watch with your eyeballs. Oh, the bottom part of the Do you see it now? Yes. What do you see? All the diagonals match. So diagonally across, it's F and F. Diagonally across, it's J and J. Diagonally across, it's F and F. So one set of diagonals should be the same. Cool, right? It just depends on which way you set them up. So one letter will be repeated. So we're going to try this. I'm not going to use the chart. I'm just going to draw my own triangles, and it might make more sense. So you can use the chart if you want to, but I'm not going to use it. So we should have three different triangles here. I'm going to draw them right here. One triangle. Two triangles. Three triangles, all drawn the same direction, okay? So here's what we're trying to do. Which one's the small one? Is it on the left side, the right side, or is it the big one? Right. So this is the small triangle right here. See it? So what's the short side of the blue triangle? Which one looks the smallest? Nine. Nine. That's going to be on the short side. Which one looks the longest? Or which one is opposite of the 90 degree angle? X. Opposite of the right angle is X. Opposite of the right angle is X. So what's the other one I haven't used yet? Y. Okay, so if that's the small triangle, the other internal triangle I have not colored yet is the medium triangle. The smallest size is one. Is there anything opposite of the 90 degree angle? No, so that's going to be blank. It's okay. What's the short side? Why is the short side? What's the long side? 21. Now I got the big triangle. So on the big triangle, what's the short side? X. X. Do I have a long side? Is there anything written right here on the long side? No. no. What's the hypotenuse? 21 plus 9 is 30.
So here's the scenario where I'm going to use those triangles to solve for x and solve for y. All right? So pick one. Which one do you want to start with? X. I'm trying to solve for x. Do I have a proportion I can set up? Does x correspond to a number on another triangle? X and 30 are in corresponding locations. I'm using small and large. So I'm going to put x over 30. Now I have to use the small and large triangles. Is there a side that corresponds to x for the small triangle and the large triangle still? 9 over x. So that's small triangle on top, large triangle on the bottom. And I have x over 30 equals 9 over x. Can we solve that? Yes, we can. You just don't remember how to. How do you normally solve proportions? 9 times 30. Cross multiply. 9 times 30. X times X. X squared. Now, if I want to solve for x, how do I get x by itself? I take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 270, you're going to have to ask your calculator. Calculator. Control. x squared. I want to do the square root of 270. 16.43. The square root of x squared. The square root of x squared is x. That's my answer. x equals 16.43. So once you set it up, you can do that. In, in our future, we'll learn that this answer is the same thing. Not right now. I don't care about that right now. Use your calculator to get a decimal. All right? Now, is there a scenario where we can set up and solve for an answer for y? Yes. Okay. Which two triangles are we going to use if you solve for y? Small and medium. Small and medium. I'm using these two triangles right here. So what is your proportion going to be? So I'm going medium side over medium side, that's y over 21. And 9 over y. Does it make sense that the y's are diagonal from each other? Yes, OK, small check there. So same cross multiply product. 9 times 21. Y times Y. So to get Y by itself, we take the square root of both sides. So go check my calculator. What is the square root of 189? 13.75. Because the 7 makes the 4 round up to a 5. The square root of y squared is y. So have I solved for all my missing pieces? Do I have x and y solved for? Guys, that's the task. That's the goal at hand. If you set up one triangle incorrectly, you don't really have any chance. I am. I'm telling you, yes, sir. So for like the bottom, is that just going to stay blank? I don't need to know it. Okay. It's just going to stay blank. 
Is there a way to figure that out? Yes, there is. Do I care about that today? No, I don't. Okay, small baby steps. That's going to be uh, topic 10 when we get to right triangles and solving for everything. So let's hit the last one real quick. In this scenario, every side has a variable, so we should be able to solve for every side of the triangle. So I'm going to let you guys uh, set up your own triangles and see if you get them right, because that's something we need to practice. So I draw my three triangles. And then you figure out which one's the small one, which one's the medium, and which one's the large one, and label them the way you think they're supposed to be labeled. Who wants to try labeling the small triangle? What well, goes here? Three. What well, goes here? Z and Y. So that's three, Z, and Y. All right, let's try this triangle right here, which is the medium triangle. What goes right here? Z. Twelve. X. X. So we have three, twelve, and X. The right angle is right here, and that points to X, which is our hypotenuse. And in the big triangle, you have to do a, a little bit of math. What goes down here? Y. Ooh. This is the right angle that points to the hypotenuse. So if this is the right angle, so right here is X, and the hypotenuse is 12 plus 3 or 15. So we have three letters to solve for, X, Y, and Z. Who wants to give it a go? So look at it this way. Which two triangles have X's on them? These two have X's. So what does that X correspond to? That's X and 15. X and 15 are on the same side. So what number on the medium triangle corresponds to X in the large triangle? 12 over X. That works the other way. So it's two steps. Step one, multiply. Step two, square root. So multiply the numbers. 12 times 15. 180. It's 180. X times X is X squared. Step two, take the square root of both of them. The square root of 180, 13.42. So I have x solved for. All 
All right, the next task is to go find y. So that's going to be this triangle and this triangle. So what does y correspond to? Hypotenuse over hypotenuse. So I have y over 15. And then y is on the bottom of the big triangle. So I'm going to use 3 over y to solve it the other way. And notice that my y's are diagonal from each other. So step one, multiply them. Three times 15 is 45, and y times y is y squared. Step two, square root both of them. The square root of 45 is Six point seven one. So I got X, I got Y. The last one I'm trying to find is Z. So which two triangles have Z's? Small and medium have Z's. So take the Z from the small triangle and find its corresponding length on the medium triangle, Z over 12. And then 3 over Z. Step 1, multiply. Step two, take the square root of both sides. Are you there? Are you there? Are you? Hello. I do. I will. Thank you. All right, so let's look at our answers. Let's see if our answers even make sense. Our answer should always be somewhere between the two numbers that we multiply. So we multiply 15 and 12 is 13 between those numbers. Yes. We multiplied 15 and 3 is 6 between those answers. Yes. We multiplied 3 and 12 is 6 between those answers. So it's a good way to check yourself. The reason that always works is it's a thing called the geometric mean. There's two questions on your test that ask you to find the geometric Are mean. Are you there? So on the next page, hello, Baker. I do. Okay, thank you. Mackenzie, you're going home. So there's two questions in your test that ask you to find the geometric mean. It says, find the geometric mean of the two numbers. So to find the geometric mean of two numbers, it's the same two steps we've been doing. Step one, multiply. Step two, square root. So if I want to find the geometric mean between 3 and 27, I have to step one, multiply them together. 3 times 27 is... 81. Step two, take the square root. The square root of 81, nine. 9, is the geometric mean. There's two questions on your test like that. Yes, sir? So these are going to be the questions? Literally. Okay. It's like questions 15 and 16 that says find the geometric mean between the two numbers. It looks just like this. So, what's the geometric mean of 2 and 8? Step 1, multiply. Four. Step 2, take the square root. What is the square root of 16? Four. So, the answer is 4. 
there's two questions like this. Easy, 10 points. And it's the same as what we have been doing. There's just no triangles that make you set everything up. So what's the geometric mean of 2 and 37? 2 times 37 is? And what is the square root of 74? 8.6. Is it exactly 8.6? Eight point six zero two, so it's eight point six. Oh, that's fine. That's it. The geometric mean is eight point six zero. So that's the same thing we have been doing. I just saved it to the end. That was supposed to be the first part of it. So now we're doing it, taking that to the last part. That's pretty much all of it wrapped up in a nutshell. Um, tomorrow on on nine point five, I'm going to give you two other methods to finding side lengths. Uh, that are for similar triangles. Okay, and we'll look at the side splitter rule and something else really crazy. So that's all of it there. Let me pause.